17 years old, I got kicked out of my family's home. Um, I was a straight A student. I was getting ready to graduate high school and then I had nowhere to live. And I had a bag of ramen and my cat and that was it. <laughs> it was, it was a difficult time. And if there was something like this that I could have gone to, that probably would have helped get me right back on track. Instead, I graduated high school, started college, and because things were kind of so chaotic, I dropped out my first semester and it took me a little while to get back into school. Um, but I was definitely homeless for about a year, uh, maybe a little bit longer than a year. It's the number one growing population in America right now is the homeless youth. And here in Nevada, it's a status offense to be under 18 and without supervision. So you can automatically get picked up for that. It's not a full arrest, but it definitely does go on your record that you are a child in need of supervision and they will take you to um, probably back to the home that you left if you were that youth. Uh, which isn't always the best thing because most kids run away. 90% of the youth that run away, it's because of family violence or violence in the home. Um, so they're on the streets for a reason because that seems better than where they were before. And then we take them back to where they were before. So that's kind of difficult. So they try not to stand out for that reason, but also because they're kids. They don't want to stand out from their peers. Teenagers want to fit in. They want to be unique, but they want to fit in, definitely. So they go and they look just like a normal kid and they're downtown and they do what they do. And then they usually find other homeless youth that are like them and they band together and pool resources and use any means they can to get by. Bring your marshmallows and your chocolate. I have peanuts and beef jerky and water. Oh, I got park my car. Are you joining us? Uh, for a bit of it, yeah. Okay. Definitely. What's your plan? Do you have you're gonna stay for the night or no, you didn't bring a bag or anything? I have a backpack, but not. Uh huh. No worry. No, that's yeah. <laughs> just yeah. I just and even uh, just roll with it. See what you want. Are you missing anybody? Sure. Would this be? We're separating though, right? Right here. Nick, would this be? I gotta post something on Facebook. I don't know if I need a picture. Would this picture be okay? Do you have a copy of it? Or? Brian, get over here. Here, come on, get over Brian, here. Brian, get Corey, get over here. Well, we have more. We still have Oliver and Pat, but we're, I just want to restart it. I'm sorry. Which I, I, I didn't I, think it was. So it's, what's it called? It's called Junk Mom. Junk Mom. But then I'm like, what if they don't come? You know, we got, oh my God, we've been working on this thing for two years. There's a number on there and they can just call. Cause we're gonna open Friday. Free food, free video games. Can you turn that down? <laughs> Like, or what do you 
what, what's your biggest fear during the day or what? You know, the biggest fear is just, you know, someone coming up to us and, you know, trying to hurt us or something. It's pretty much the biggest fear. Pretty much. All we really do is walk around, try to find food, you know, try to find another place to stay. But we're like the nicest people you'll ever meet. Probably. Has, have you been, had problems like people assaulting you or whatever? Yeah. All the time. And, and you don't have any way to get help? No. That breaks my heart. I shouldn't have to feel that way. Are commonplace. We're gonna be out and sleeping tonight too. I mean, if you want to be near us, we're safe. We're gonna be keep it safe. I got my bag and everything. Ryan, my son, has it. We'll be fine. You know, you know better place. Okay. All right. I just want you to be safe. We will. We will. If we really wanted to help this population, we could definitely do it. There's no questions there. A lot of people in Reno don't see that there even is a problem, however. And if they kind of hear that there is a problem, they really don't want to admit that there is a problem or they'll deny that it's there because it's, it's a hidden population. And unless you work directly with them or were one, you don't know. Okay, I got resources. Okay? I love you. I love you too. You are magic, man. <laughs> you are magic. You are too. Oh my God. I'm going to be pissed if you don't show up at the drop in center. We promise. Please I will don't. hunt you now. I don't back out of a promise. All right. And we got it. All right. Medicaid, you can automatically take advantage of this, no problem. Um, you get 500 minutes, unlimited text, call or text anywhere in the United States. You with insurance? Yeah, with insurance. Yeah, I see me. How's your day going? So what? Your what? Uh, yeah, I see you guys. How's your Come on. We only got a couple. They are, let me try to word this. Um, I mean, as I see it, they're kind of preying on people that uh, don't really have money and don't really have means. So they get a kickback for sending people up for federal run benefits. So one of them being an Obama phone. I mean, that's what people call it. I don't know what the legal term is, but they get a kickback for everybody they sign up. So they, they walk around and, and try to, yeah, it's an Obama, but like, you know, what the government calls it. But uh, yeah, it's part of, you know, food stamps and, um, you know, SNAP and all that. and. Snap handles all they have outreach and you know they sign people up and do everything but these guys go and you know I mean as I see it kind of prey on um, prey on these people and they sign them up for these phones that you know a lot of them really don't need and they suck off the government because these people don't really want the phones if they want it it's easily accessible it costs uh, taxpayers money to have these phones and these guys are making money in their pockets off of it so was about to be homeless, you know, because, um, I don't know, I got kicked out, but, you know, at the same time I was dating someone, so they kind of adopted me, but, you know, it's like a lot of people don't really have the option to, like, live in spaces, you know, and have some place to, like, be. accidentally just fall into like addictions and stuff and you know like by the time they're like done with whatever they're doing it's like you know you don't really know where you are you don't have anyone to like kind of like lead you you know like you might you might just um you might just run away from home sometimes it's just it's sometimes it's like the person's own personal choice to be you know like alone sometimes but at the same time it's like you know it's kind of 
it's good to have people, to know people, you know, because at the same time, it's like there's a lot of people that actually do care. And there's a lot of people that are just, just really respectful of like, you know, of a lot of people that are homeless and they're aware, you know, and I think that's a good thing to be aware, you know, because it's, it's really hard. Like, you know, there's the middle class, there's the lower class, there's the upper class. And I think like, you know, even, even the middle class is, you know, they have it just as hard. I just got a number that blew my mind. It costs $537 a day to incarcerate a youth in, in Nevada. Jen Evans. Jen Evans. Uh, yeah. How much? That's $537 a day to put something in Jen Evans. Do you believe this? That's not okay. Like, I'm proud of it, but I'm like currently running from the state of California. Um, for something I did, you know, something stupid I did, you know, I shouldn't have done, you know, I shouldn't uh, did what I did, but I did it, you know, now I'm facing the consequences, you know, and because I don't want to go to jail, I'm running, so, you know, but it's just best for the, it's just best to, you know, help and teach the kids just, just to stay out of trouble, you know. So that way they don't end up in the situation I'm in. Especially if they're newly made homeless, um, that's the best time to get them into any service help. Um, it's a great place for them to just hang out, meet people, that can help them out if they want to get back into school. There's a ton of resources for that here. They can also just kind of hang out, have a place to go when it might be cold or super hot out. Um, we, there's food here so they can eat when they need to. They, they'll have some things that they could get at a home if they had a home. first got kicked out, it was 3 a.m. It was the first snowstorm of the year. I had nowhere to go. I went and sat in Walmart <laughs> until the buses started running, then took a bus downtown and just kind of walked around hoping that I could run into something that would help my situation. I mean, if there were a place I could have gone that night, that would have been great. It was freezing out. I didn't want to sit at Walmart for hours. <laughs> I had my cat in my backpack. She was not happy to be in a backpack. <laughs> um, I was freezing. I didn't have a jacket. It was pretty awful. I met some people. I stayed on their floor. There was like 10 people living in one bedroom. Um, and I started to become entrenched in that lifestyle. I didn't have anywhere to go. My parents, they weren't speaking to me. I had come from an abusive home and um, I, wasn't, I didn't want to go back there. So I didn't have an ID. I didn't have a social security card, a birth certificate. I couldn't get a job. I was in school, but my grades were slipping because I didn't have a place where I could do homework or a place to sleep or food to eat. <laughs> so I went and talked to my scholarship advisor. She gave me some free meal cards, but um, I mean, I didn't want to use them. She helped me get out of school for that semester, but stay involved in some of the activities in the school, and she got me involved in a counseling program. but. I had no idea what to do at that point. It took a good two or three months before I could get that figured out. And in the meantime, I had nowhere to sleep. I had no ID, no way of providing for myself. Uh, it was not where I expected my life to be. We slept in weeklies. We stayed um, on people's floors, in their houses, on their couch. There are some adults in Reno that open up their homes to homeless youth. Um, they're not the safest people. 
they're not the safest adults to be around, but when you don't have anything, something's better than nothing. Um, if I got stranded, I didn't have anywhere to stay that night, I wouldn't sleep at night, that's for sure. I'd kind of go from bathroom to bathroom in the casinos, because I was too young to be in the casinos that late. Um, and I didn't want them to stop me, so I'd go from bathroom to bathroom, or if I had any kind of money at all, I'd ride the bus all night until the sun came out, and then it was sleep. I would sleep in the park or something where it was safer, and you just look like someone who is out having a good day. Nobody would really bother you then, and there's more, more public around, but it's, I mean, you, you have to be scared being alone at night anyways in a place like Reno um, or anywhere but especially for a female it's even a little bit more scary <laughs> uh, it was always kind of trying to do stuff to protect myself you had to be aware of that all the time to feel like I was earning my place in society at least a little bit and so I did street performing to try and get some money and I learned a form of contact juggling um, called flower sticks or devil sticks and you juggle one stick in between two others and it's really cool people think they're magnetized or they, they get really into them and so we had a good act me and my friend and we made a decent amount of money, at least enough to buy food for the day or if we needed, you know, shampoo or something. <laughs> I mean, you went without a lot of things and you can only fit so many things into a backpack, so you only need so much money to fund that. One thing that it's definitely important for Rena to know is that there are homeless youth out there. You're not going to see them walking around carrying a shopping cart with a bunch of cans and bags, so you're not going to notice them as, you know, what you would typically think of as homeless. You're not going to see them sleeping on the street corner. They're going to look just like every other kid, and they're going to be trying to do the best that they can for themselves. But they're definitely out there, and they could use they could use your help, they could use anybody's help that is willing to impact their lives in a positive way. And I'm doing what I gotta do, just to stay strong. month while my company is really slow and then they hire everyone back and they do everything they can to try and make it so that you don't go get another job so it's basically paid vacation because <laughs> um, they want all their workers to come back they just can't afford to give us all the benefits and stuff like they were before so and that starts the day of my graduation so I'm gonna have like four to six weeks just completely free to to do whatever I want.
also have <laughs> quite a bit of training in psychology and art and human development and logistics because these were all my majors before. <laughs> Logistics is really fun, but they cut that program up at UNR because they had to make some budget cuts. So we're headed up to the university. I've got two classes left and then I'm done. I've been going to school for so long and some semesters I just took classes just to take them to stay in school. And uh, it's been nine years since I graduated high school and I've been in college intermittently since then. So it's just kind of hard to believe that it's going to be over. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have like, any pictures except for the stuff that Taylor sent me. I know you guys mentioned that you had videos, I just don't know where they were. Yeah. So I just oh, yeah. kind of YouTubed Mothers in Prison and put that on there. <laughs> then we did. Okay, so then now we're like seeing your kid program. Yeah. And like She's, she's a big dreamer, and uh, she, unlike a lot of people who dream, she actually makes these dreams happen. Yeah. And she, she wants to help kids in our area. She also runs a home for boys um, that takes in boys who have aged out of the foster care system. Um, so this is really just the next step, and the next step in the Homeless Youth Drop-In Center is they're hoping to actually open up a shelter. Um, they just got the building, so th hopefully there will be some actual housing there as well at the Homeless Youth Drop-In Center at some point. Anybody, anybody here aware of or heard of Restart? Mm -hmm. That was my very first student. Um, the prison population has increased, it's going to continue to increase women with children in the prisons. It's, like she said, it's a ballooning population. So, it's a 90 hour program. We're just making apples. Next semester we can do a presentation on that. <laughs> Ms. Eddie has an interesting background. Her work has included senior youth and hospice care, both in the United States and in Africa. We are proud to claim her as a 2011 graduate of our MSW program. She created the Eddie House, a nonprofit for youth who are at risk or homelessness. The project recently expanded from a residential home to an all-inclusive resource center for homeless and at-risk youth. Would you please join me in welcoming Ms. Lynette Eddy. Thank you so much, Dr. Menon and um, faculty and staff here. I have um, so many mixed feelings, it's um, hard to describe. I mean, my husband passed away, he committed suicide. So obviously it, it 
you know, kind of rocked my world. And um, I, I had to really uh, dig deep and, and um, find the strength and hope to get to the other side. And, you know, fortunately I did. And when I came out, I felt, I felt stronger and even more determined to make a difference. And I knew I had to live my truth and my passion. And my passion is to be a social worker. And then I've also learned working with my clients is um, there's two things. If you show them that you accept them, like they belong, you're not judging. And then you also show them that they matter. They're significant, they mean something. And it's just those two things. It's just like, I always say, it's like water and uh, sunshine and they just blossom. It's just the human condition. I can't thank the, the crew here enough of what they've given me. It's a huge part of who I am today and the confidence and just the support they've given me and just the feeling I have the, I have the, I have the skills thanks to them. So be bold and live without no limits, no fear, no limits. Go for it. That's all I have to say. <laughs>